really scary feeling because we've got no end date, but there's nowhere else to go. It's been a very, very difficult decision and I think everyone is, is feeling uh, guilty, sad and um, frightened in a way that we've done this. We've never done anything like this before. We've tried striking for just a, one day or mornings or afternoons but we, we feel like we don't have any choice now. We need to get our voices heard and a decision needs to be made really. Outside the council house meetings, they brought pastors. They've cancelled um, surgeries because they found out that we we're going to go and talk to them. I've emailed MPs, Margaret Beckett, she's not got back. The council is saying if you cancel your strike action, we will meet with you. We have actually um, done that twice before. They've asked us to stop industrial action, which we have done to no avail. We've cancelled, they've arranged the meeting and then cancelled it on the morning or on the lunchtime. The proposal they've given us is not good enough for anyone really. We haven't got anything. There are some people out there that are really struggling and have had to take two jobs, move house, just to make ends meet, especially single mums. We don't want to cancel anything until they have the meetings, they put it down on, in writing and they offer us that and then we, we will cancel our strike when it's all done and dusted. Council says we all worked, got a full time wage for a part time job. We didn't. We never did. Our wages were divided. It was pro rata over the year. You know, these people are in the council and they don't know their own rules. They don't know what's going off, and that's what scares me the most that they have no idea what's actually going off out here. They then went on to introduce a 37 hour week as a full time equivalent working week within schools. Now, now bearing in mind teachers are still on a 32 and a half hour week as a full time equivalent. That meant that schools didn't migrate people over onto the 37 hour week, kept them on 32 and a half hours and made them part time and they had their pay reduced retrospectively. All of those grades that were on the lower grades were compressed together and they had spinal column points removed so they had the op they had they had the opportunity to earn any more pay removed whereas those on the on the higher grades they've had their grades expanded so they've had a greater opportunity to earn a, a, a hell of a lot more pay some of the school support staff may have gone up a grade but that grade is worth considerably much lower <laughs> Personally, I've lost £4,000 a year, which is £320 a month. We have a couple of ladies in our school who've lost over £5,000 a year, and they cannot do any more hours. I've lost £6,500. I've been given extra hours. I now work 41 hours a week for considerably less than I was on this time last year. And we actually sat down last night with my husband and worked it out and I now have to work an extra 34 hours a month, which is roughly 12 and a half weeks more for less money than I was on this time last year. I actually have a 17-year-old daughter who's, uh, who's got an apprenticeship, but she's gone out and got, she's got herself a part-time job, so she's helping me really with money. Uh, and anything we want, when we want to go out and do things as a family, um, Whereas before I would pay for everything, my daughter who's 17, and it's not her job to do it, she's, she's helping me a lot and I'm finding myself in a position now where I'm going to have to go out and look for a job, which means um, when I'm at work all day, I'm with other people, looking after other people's children and educating them and then when I come home at night, I'm not going to be able to be with my own children. I have to decide whether I'm going to put petrol in my car or feed myself. 
and now I've had to use my um, late parents um, inheritance they left for me to buy to have, not luxuries not to have holidays or anything like that but just to be able to buy food for myself my parents didn't have much they left that for us for a rainy day and my rainy day arrived when I'm waiting Derby City Council changed my terms and conditions on the 1st of June it just breaks my heart to think that I'm having to use something that I could then pass on to my daughter from me and it just hurts hurts a lot my husband's had to take a new job to bridge the gap I've got a daughter at university Kind of, I used to subsidise her because obviously we've got, she has fees that she has to pay, she has living costs to pay. I used to subsidise that. I can't do it anymore. Mm. So he's now had to take another job, which entails him working away from home at a period of time. The stress for the whole family is just horrendous now. When we agreed for her to go, I had a job where I could subsidise her. That's all gone. So she's now having to work on top of my husband an extra job I feel guilty because I can't support her. She's feeling guilty because she's put the added financial pressure on us. And my husband's under pressure because he knows now that his job is even more important to support all of us. I have to make a decision about my home this, by the end of the summer, whether I can live there any longer. And I don't think they understand that because my mortgage was linked to my wages. It's a degrading thing when your child has to pay for you to have a, a bar meal. Nothing extravagant that I cannot afford to do. Mother and daughter time. And she'll say, well, I'll pay mum, I know you can't afford it. It's wrong. This is what we would expect the Tories to do. It's not what we would expect a Labour-controlled authority to do. We certainly wouldn't expect a Labour-controlled authority as well to demonise their own workforce for taking industrial action because they can no longer pay their mortgages, pay their rent, keep a roof over their head. <coughs> We've asked them to come and spend time in the schools. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody's prepared to come and actually see what we do. A teaching assistant works within the classroom and takes intervention groups and children out of the classroom. A higher level teaching assistant has done a year's extra qualification at university and they're qualified to teach classes and they can plan the lessons. No two minutes are the same with the children. They're brilliant and I don't want to be outside standing shouting come on by might listen to us I want to be sat next to a child teaching them how to read and write mm. who um I work in a school where there's 29 languages and they need me in there I have groups in the afternoon of children who have no English whatsoever and I personally take them through so that they can then access the curriculum first aid I do a nurture group in the morning, breakfast club for children who struggle to come into school. I used to work in the only key stage one nurture group in Derby, um, where we had the most vulnerable children from across the city. Uh, we would be spat at, we would be sworn at, we would be hit, we would be kicked on a daily basis, try and get them back into mainstream school. And if mainstream school wasn't appropriate, they would then be moved into the appropriate provision. That's all gone. City Council have decided that the funding is better used elsewhere within schools, so that, that nurture group has been closed. They've got rid of all the midday supervisors, so we're all doing that, so there's having an impact on that. We all do PPA every three afternoons a week, each teaching assistant does, so we're all doing PPA, so it's had an impact on that. The atmosphere is not the same at school anymore because the teachers, they're very, they're, they're very understanding, but because of their heavy work workload now without us, they're very stressed. If the atmosphere at school isn't nice, how on earth are the children going to learn? The whole thing is just wrong. Head teachers have made it very clear that if school support staff were to leave, it's difficult to recruit into those roles, especially in special educational needs schools, because of the training that they have to do. I've done th uh, two years' worth of training to, to get to get the job in the first place, and then we've been sent on courses, and you, 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 you've got on-the-job on training as well. We have to do um, training on autism, um, all aspects of autism, and I've specifically been on a couple of courses on attachment disorder because those are the children I've been working with. I actually did a nurture network um, and I had to go to Edgehill University to do it. It was an 18 month old long course. Anybody that worked in the nurture group had to have that qualification to do it but they won't recognise the paying of that. That would make me a level 40A. They won't even pay me a level 2 with additional needs anymore.
we are engaging in, in um, a programme of professional development for our support staff whilst they're on strike. For example, next week they're going to be doing Asperger's and Autism training, they're going to be doing ICT training, that will all benefit the children when we get back into the classroom and start doing our jobs again. <laughs> We've got people who are lone strikers in some schools that have felt completely empowered by meeting other people that are on strike. When we started this dispute we had about five active stewards in Derby City. Now we've got around 27 active stewards and they are absolutely fantastic activists. People are becoming very, very concerned. They're concerned about volunteers covering their posts, parents being called into man offices and they're just finding the situation now that they're all out is just completely untenable. We need the support of the teachers and the head teachers to close the schools, this will be over very, very quickly if we can close more schools. I'm Helen McLaughlin and I'm here to support my daughter who really just wants to get back into school and without the TAs at school we can't do anything so we're here to support the TAs to help it get sorted out and to get our children back at school. The council blaming the union and it's not the union, it's the council because they just need to give the TAs the pay that they deserve. And until they go into the school to make Derby a safe, strong and ambitious city, a better place to live, work and visit. Uh, we will like to you. I'll just interrupt you a minute, please. That's I right. will suspend this meeting if this carries on. You <coughs> let you give people respect and let them start. Well, we deserve respect and we deserve to be respect. listened to. Nice we haven't for the last three respect. months. Yeah. We My deserve to be listened to respect. and we're not being listened to. Educating Derby, we are walking tall. But Derby City Council, they won't support us. These finest politicians, they help me look No respect for little children, cuts to services and pay. We're united and determined to fight them all the way. Banwait's bureaucratic bandits engage in Tory fraud. These gutless politicians, here we talk about.